Can you imagine a world without light? Or a world without the blue sky? How about a world without sunsets? Even the smartphones we use every day emit light. In this video, we'll be talking about light and how it gives color to our world. We have learned previously that light is an example of a transverse wave. Thus, it exhibits characteristics and properties of a wave. Specifically, it is classified as an electromagnetic wave. Let's get started with this activity. Fill a container with water. Clean the surface of a mirror and place it into container at an angle below the surface level of the water. Place the container under the sun in a position where the sunlight falls on the surface of the mirror. Hold a piece of white paper above the container to catch the reflected rays from the mirror. What did you see on the paper? If you did the activity right, you would see a rainbow reflected on the paper. When the sunlight shone on the mirror, light first entered the water and refracts or bends. Since sunlight is a mixture of visible colors, each color has its own frequency and wavelength. These colors refract at different angles and get separated from each other. The separated colors are then reflected from the mirror to the paper. The human eye is only sensitive to a very narrow portion of the electromagnetic spectrum lying between the infrared and ultraviolet. We call this light. It is what was reflected on the paper in the activity we just completed. You may have noticed that when someone dives on a deep pool near you, it will look like the water is just shallow if you are watching near and above the surface of the water. This optical illusion is known as apparent depth. Apparent depth is the illusion that objects under the water appear to be nearer to the surface than they really are. This phenomenon is a consequence of the bending of light when light traverses the air-water boundary. Unlike sound, light does not need a medium to propagate. It moves in its maximum speed in vacuum, but this speed decreases as it moves along different media. This characteristic of light consequently shows bending when it crosses the boundary between two media. Take this pencil in a glass of water as an example. The two media for light is air and liquid. Apparent distortion of an object at the boundary between media is observed. Refraction is the bending of light when it travels from one medium to another of different optical densities. The pencil in the water as shown is not really broken. If we remove the water from the glass and look at the pencil, the pencil's normal appearance is not crooked. This distortion happens because of the change in speed and orientation of light with respect to the normal as it traverses a new medium of a different density. You may have noticed that when lightning strikes from afar, a flash of light comes before you can hear the thunder. This is because light travels faster than sound. Light travels at approximately 3 times 10 raised to the 8th power meters per second or 300 million meters per second in a vacuum. This speed decreases when light travels in a dense medium. This means that the speed of light is dependent on the properties of the medium. When you look at yourself in the mirror, you can see your reflection. But when you look at other objects, you can only see the object itself. These phenomena are caused by the way light is reflected. If light is reflected on a rough textured or uneven surface such as paper, it scatters in many directions. This is called diffuse reflection. Diffuse reflection allows us to see objects from any angle. On the other hand, regular or specular reflection happens when light strikes a smooth, flat, and shiny surface such as a mirror and is reflected in one direction. It enables us to see an image on the surface. When a narrow beam of white light enters a triangular block called a prism, the beam splits into a different range of colors called spectrum. 
The process by which light is separated into its colors due to differences in degrees of refraction is called dispersion. A rainbow is formed by the dispersion of sunlight in drops of water. When sunlight passes through each spherical raindrop, it is refracted and dispersed and then internally reflected one or more times before it finally emerges out of the raindrop. The sunlight is again reflected and refracted at different angles as it passes through other drops. Take a look at this illustration. Each color corresponds to a given wavelength and frequency. Red light has the highest wavelength and lowest frequency, while violet light has the lowest wavelength and highest frequency. When we relate it to this table, red light, which has the highest wavelength and lowest frequency, has the lowest energy, while violet light, which has the lowest wavelength and highest frequency, has the highest energy. Thus, we can say that the higher the wavelength, the lower the energy, which means that wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional. On the other hand, the higher the frequency, the higher the energy. Frequency and energy are directly proportional to each other. This is why red has the lowest energy, while violet has the highest energy. What makes the sunset and sunrise red? Why is the sky blue? The answers lie in the composition of the atmosphere and the nature of light waves. The atmosphere is a mixture of gases, droplets of water, and solid particles. Light travels in straight lines as long as nothing disturbs it. As light moves through the atmosphere, it bumps into bits of solid particles or gas molecules and becomes scattered in all directions by either reflection or refraction. This phenomenon is known as Rayleigh scattering, named after the English physicist Lord John Rayleigh. The angle through which sunlight is scattered varies inversely as the fourth power of the wavelength. Hence, blue and violet having shorter wavelengths are scattered more than orange and red. The blue appearance of the sky is a scattering phenomenon. As light moves through the atmosphere, most of the longer wavelengths pass straight through. However, much of the shorter wavelengths, like blue, interact with the gas molecules and become scattered in the atmosphere. The atmosphere scatters violet light more effectively, but our eyes are more sensitive to blue. Since you see the blue light from everywhere overhead, the sky looks blue. Now, what makes the sunset and sunrise red? At sunset or sunrise, when the sun is near the horizon or low in the sky, sunlight travels a longer distance through the atmosphere before it gets to your eyes. However, the blue light is unable to pass. It becomes scattered in the atmosphere before it even reaches your eyes. Hence, only the longer wavelengths, such as orange and red, are left making the sun and the sky around it appear red or orange. So to summarize, light is an electromagnetic wave and is the only type of wave visible to the human eye between the infrared and ultraviolet wave. Refraction of light is the bending of light when it travels from one medium to another of different optical densities. Reflection of light is the bouncing back of light and depends on the surface of the object. Wavelength and frequency are inversely proportional, and frequency and energy are directly proportional. That's all for now. See you on our next video, and don't forget to keep your minds busy! If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification icon for more videos like this.